Good morning boys and girls, welcome back to Sunday School, it's Colin here. It's September and after, we're going to talk today about another missionary born in 1840. And her name of, was uh, Lottie Moon from America who went to China, who loved education and loved to teach children their education as well as the Bible. And then we're going to show you a video of going around schools, uh, particularly in Northern Ireland, because it's September, it's back to school time. But before that, let's sing the song, Be Bold, Be Strong, Then I Will Pray. Oh, yeah. 
can pray to you. Let's pray now before we come to uh, tell you the story of Lottie Moon. Father, we thank you for Sunday school. We well, thank the Lord for all the boys and girls right across the country who've been watching online and learning these tremendous missionary stories. And Father, we pray you bless children, encourage them to give their hearts and lives to you when they're young and then to have that desire to love you and to serve you all of their days. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just right for the job, this story is entitled and it's about another missionary to China. Millions of people in China. And of course, this was way back in the early, in the mid 1800s, long, long time ago. And it's so important to learn the challenges. Now, this was a girl called Lottie. Lottie was born into a family, quite well off a family, and she went to boarding school. Her father died when she was quite young, so she was sent to boarding school. And whenever she was there, she was really um, well educated, but she was extremely talented and gifted to be able to uh, be, to learn and to, to pass exams. But she was also quite a mischievous girl. Whenever I think of a bell, I think of Lottie at one of the stories whenever she was at boarding school. The bell used to go up every morning at six o'clock. It, it was a bell just like this here. I had that for my camps in Tullymore. So every time it's meal time, you would ring the bell, the kids would yell, whoa, run as fast as they can. Lots of primary schools have still got the manual. It's called the school bell. But every morning this bell would off at six o'clock. It would off for meal time, for getting up time, and also for time to go to chapel. They called it the church uh, religious services. And so she thought she woke up really early in the morning, climbed away up with the light where the bell was, took her sheets of her bed and put it tied it around this here. So whenever the bell would ring, automatically uh, there would be no sound because the bed sheets would bang against it. Everyone kept sleeping, there was no sound and then there was chaos because everything was delayed as the day went on. But of course she was found out. Because she was so mischievous, everyone automatically blamed her whenever something went wrong. So, but as well as being mischievous, she liked fun, but she also loved her learning. And it was said whenever she finished school, she was fluent in five languages. Then when she went to China, she was able to learn the Chinese very, very quickly and be able to adapt to the people and speak quickly. But of course, going through uh, school, she was not a Christian. She was actually quite rebellious against the things of God. And one time she went to one of the meetings where a preacher was preaching and she deliberately was going to use her intelligence to listen to what he would say so she can mock him and ask him a question to fault him. But the Lord works in a wonderful, mysterious way. And while the preacher was preaching, suddenly God's word began to convict her. And she realized she was a, a really bad sinner. And not only that, she was born with sin, separated from God. But she was hearing verses like from Romans, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And how the wages of sin is death. And she realized the way she was living, all her education, money she might inherit, uh, whatever she achieved in life, the wages of sin meant death to her. But God was offering her a free gift. And there and then, that day, she responded to that. And she be simply became a Christian. She turned from her sin by believing what the Lord Jesus done on the cross in Calvary. And her sins were all washed away. And she had a new clean heart. She completely changed. And that's what God is still doing today. And he will still do it until the day he comes back again to take all his children home. Before this here, um, whatever we think of this uh, little girl, Lottie Moon, she was a very selfish girl, very proud, very mean in many ways. She was grumpy, lazy, uh, undependable and also faithful. But whenever she became a Christian, her selfish nature became generous. Her proud nature became Humble. God hates pride. She was a mean person, suddenly becoming a kind person. She was a grumpy person, 
Whenever you were around her, she was often grumpy, but now she became cheerful. And she was lazy because she was intelligent. She didn't need, need to work. But now she became a hard worker. She learned how to bake and things like that. And she was undependable, unreliable. But now she was a faithful person. And she was fearful. And now she was completely trusting in God. And that's a sign of a Christian. A selfish person. People are often selfish and proud and mean. Grumpy, lazy, undependable, fearful. Can you tick any of these boxes? Well, if you struggle with these here, God can help you. And you can become generous and humble and kind and cheerful, hardworking, faithful, trusting. That's the type of person I want to be. And this is the old nature. And that's the new nature in Christ Jesus. He helps you become like this here. But then whenever she was older, she was sitting in a meeting. And the preacher was talking about missionary work and talking about how God needs missionaries to go to China. And she really loved the Lord at this stage. And, just, and as the preacher was preaching and giving out the call for men to respond to China, she would pray in her heart, Lord, send men to China. China needs the gospel. People there need the Lord. But as she was praying, Lord, send other people, send men. She felt, heard a voice saying, you go. It was so strong. She actually opened her eyes and looked around to see who was talking to her. But it was the Spirit of God whispering in her ear and in her heart. Lottie, you go to China. If others are not willing to go, you go. And you will be able to serve me in China. She worked as a teacher. She was renowned for being a brilliant teacher. And for seven more years until she could take it no longer and she thought, I need to go to China. Because the call kept going out. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, the workers are few. Pray, ask the Lord of the harvest that he, that he will send forth laborers or workers into his harvest field. Matthew chapter 9, 37 and 38. So therefore she boarded onto a big ship and it took her over a month to get all the way to China, to go from America right to China. And whenever she got there, uh, she was in a mountainous area. China is a huge continent, a huge country, rather. And of course, very communist. People are not crying out for God, but they still need the Lord. And she made her home up in the mountains, not far from the, where the mountains go into the sea. And these walls are a few thousands of years old. And it was a very beautiful part of the world, very mountainous, very green. And she quickly learned the Chinese language. Because you realize if I'm here in China, they know where they're going to speak English. I need to learn how to speak Chinese to communicate with the people. And she developed quickly a very a deep love for the Chinese people. But of course, the Chinese people seen her as a foreigner. And they didn't like foreigners. They'd never seen them. They called her a foreign devil. She was very short, just over four feet tall. And very, and whenever they would often, people would spit at her, they would ignore her, they would mock her, they, when she walked around, they would push her about, and that would frighten anyone, let alone a girl on her own in China. But she was, she was very, very, in many ways, stubborn, she was very bold, very determined, and God had sent her to China to reach these people, but no one was talking to her, and she thought, I'm, I'm really going to try and reach these people. But then she had a brilliant idea. People were afraid of her. So whenever she was in America, she learned how to bake. So she started to bake cookies. And suddenly the smell, the children were like wee puppies that would smell and run to her house and stick their nose through the door to smell the scent of cookies. That's the sort of thing I would do. Uh, but no one, no one would take the cookies because they thought they were going to poison her. Whenever she was um, drinking raspberry juice, they thought she was drinking blood. And whenever she was eat, eating pickled onions, they thought they were eating people, she was eating people's eyes. That's the sort of mindset they had. But the children, she said, look, in Chinese, I will eat one of these. And they all waited till she dropped dead. But of course that never happened. There were cookies, there were biscuits. And one by one they started to eat until they loved them. And then she began to win the confidence of the people. And slowly but surely uh, the children would come one by one, two by two. Many of them very, very poor. And she said to the parents, I will, am willing to teach your children if you let me teach them about the Bible and teach them about God. And she started up a school and there were 13 came, then there were 30. And within a month there was 100 children enrolled in her school. She could teach them uh, 
basic education, but every day she was allowed to teach them from the Bible. It was wonderful. And Chinese practice, whenever you're learning, you would recite out loud. And it was wonderful how she could teach them the Bible verses. And the children would turn around and recite word perfectly the verses from the Chinese Bible. I want to tell you two stories. One's about a little girl. One of the little girls, she trusted the Lord Jesus. She was a Christian. But now on the turn of her wedding, uh, family culture was but on your wedding day, you would have to pray for your dead relatives and also pray to the false gods. And Yen was so strong in this little town of Saline that she said to her parents, I not pray for ancestors who are dead. We only pray for the living, for the living to God. And we no long, I no longer pray to false gods of paper stone. I only pray to God of heaven. I not get married unless you allow me not to do that. And that's what she said. And the parents said, that's okay. You do what you have to do. And God honoured the little girl for taking a stand for the Lord Jesus. And that's her on her wedding day in China. All different colours. They love the different costumes and all the different colours. The next story is about a man called Li Chin and also Li Chou Ting. Li Chin, Li Chou Ting. It sounds like I'm fluent in Chinese. I absolutely love Chinese food. <laughs> when it comes to the word, absolutely not a chance. But I know this, Li Qing, Li Shou Qing. Li Qing was an older man with a grown up family. And he loved to listen to this foreign woman talk about God in his language. And as he listened, God began to do work in his heart. And suddenly stood up and said, I want to follow Jesus in the Chinese language and Lottie led that man to the Lord and gave him a New Testament. When he came home and told his children, his grown up children, they were so angry that their father had decided to turn away from their false gods. They locked him up and put him into a shed. That's what they'd done to their father. But he didn't mind. He just began to say the verses from the Bible that he'd been reading about and singing the songs he'd been singing with Lottie Moon. And the, the, the sons decided to pay, pray a trick and they got one of the religious Chinese leaders and they said, take his Bible and read it to him and we want you to find fault with it and to mock it and to make fun. And that's what he tried to do. But the amazing thing is whenever the Chinese religious man started to read the Chinese Bible, suddenly God began to work in his heart and he couldn't find it. He couldn't mock it. He couldn't find fault with it. He couldn't mock it. And whenever he fell asleep, the old man fell asleep. The Chinese religious leader, he kept reading and reading. And as he read, he began to cry. And he realized this is a living book. It's a real book. This God is a real God. This Jesus is real. And he sought the Lord Jesus. And he became a Christian. And he became one of the greatest Chinese evangelists all over North China. See, God has a wonderful plan of all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Towards the end of Lottie's life, for 40 years she spent in China, reaching the Chinese children, often starving herself of food to give the Chinese children food so they have strength and energy to learn more of God and the Bible. Civil war broke out in North China between the government and between rebels. But Lottie was known as the Bible woman or as the heavenly woman for the influence she had on educating children. She was using her gifts and talents, her educated mind, the gift of language and people who came to her. Some people travel 300 miles just to listen or to be taught by Lottie Moon. She taught the Chinese language or the culture and especially to listen to her talk about God. It was amazing. But in this day, in the hospital, so many people were injured. The, the Baptist Christian hospital was full of patients. And Lottie says, I must go and talk to some of these people. But they said, it's too dangerous, it's too dangerous. You'll be shot, you'll be killed. But word of night on a certain day at 10 o'clock, Lottie Moon is going to pass through the firing line of both enemies fighting each other. And the generals commanded both their armies, whenever they see the horse and the cart and the wee woman, to hold fire. And that's how much they had respect as the wee woman, Lottie Moon, 
the wee American Chinese woman as she walked through with the enemies on each side of the firing line. There was silence as they stood in respect to Lottie Moon as she walked through the place. She was now 72 years old. She was advised to go back home to America to get some rest. Her body was very, very weak. And now she got on to the hospital and a nurse came with her just to be with her uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the big ship to take her back to America. A few days later, she was so weak, she asked the nurse to sing to her softly the words, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I am weak, but he is strong. And as she was singing that song for the final time, Lottie Moon closed her eyes and immediately woke up in the presence of the Lord Jesus. She never made it back home to America. She never made it to fame and fortune. She gave the rest of her health, her energy, her strength, her days, her years, to serving the children, the Chinese children in China. It's a lovely story about a life sold out, a life well lived for the lovely Lord Jesus. Why? Just to reach the Chinese children, children who know not God, know nothing about God, and yet through her learning the language, the Chinese language, Mandarin language she could speak and the language that they could understand and many of them sought the Lord Jesus to be their own and personal saviour. Many books have been written by uh, for Lo about Lottie Moon's life story, Changing China for Christ, One Woman, The Influence She Had for God and for the People. Many of her letters have been way back and you can see it in October the 9th, 1878. All these years, years ago, Joanna says that's very, very neat writing. And it's amazing. Some of the things she said, only believe, don't fear, our master Jesus always watching over us. No matter what the persecution, Jesus will surely overcome it. And she was persecuted. She wasn't wanted. She was called names, spat upon, called foreign devil, tossed out, pushed around, abused, all these things. But she was so confident God called her to China and she stuck it out right till the very end. There's some of her letters you can read. Uh, just look at them. This is Lottie Moon, just a normal girl, never married, never had children, sold out for God. And what a champion she was for the Lord Jesus. And her letters still live today. And she was sent home to her mum, her friends, her family in America. But she said, I'm staying in China to reach the Chinese children. Just a normal girl, trusting the Lord Jesus. And while men would not respond to the call of God, she said, like Samuel, here am I, send me. Or Isaiah, here am I, send me. What was it for? For these little children, their parents, grandparents, they all need the Lord. Children need the Lord. People need the Lord. And Lottie Moons responded to the call of God saying, I will go because of the children and learn the Chinese language and teach them about the one true and living God. Wonderful story, a great challenge, uh, the story of Lottie Moon. We're going to sing another song. Let's sing that wee song, Jesus Loves Me. And then immediately after that, we're going to go and see some of the schoolwork in Northern Ireland. Yes, Jesus. 
and watch a video about some of the schoolwork we've been doing reaching children who educated children, children who've been educated, potential doctors and lawyers and solicitors and bankers and bin drivers and farmers and all sorts of little children who one day soon will become big adults and yet we have the joy of going into the school to teach them about the lovely Lord Jesus. Here we go. You unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears have come I'm a Christian. I became it about a year ago when I came home from this Bible club. I went on my bed and I prayed to God to take away my sins. I love this Bible club. I've been here for five years. I like that we're learning about God, Jesus, because my I don't ever go to church. Joel, what do you think of the Bible club? I, I absolutely love it. It's taught me so much about God and obviously how to be saved. Yeah, I love it.
That's just something about what we do here in Northern Ireland, from schools to out and about around the caravan parks, camps, whatever, and of course some of the literature, the books, the tracks that we print for the children. Wonderful. We're going to sing the song, the closing, Obedience is the Very Best Way. I wonder, can you spell the word obedience? <laughs> O-B-E-D-I-E-N-C-E. Obedience is the very to show that you believe Do it exactly what the Lord commands Do it and I believe Action is the key, do it immediately Joy you will receive Obedience is the very best way To show that you believe And you smell it to show that you believe. All of uh, July, August, September we'll be looking at mystery stories and the beginning of October all been well we're back at the books of the Bible going through the New Testament. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for another opportunity of Sunday school learning another mystery story about Lottie Moon, the little woman who went to China to reach the little children for the lovely Lord Jesus. Bless Lord all the boys and girls and encourage us to follow you, to be like Naughty, and give our hearts and our lives to following the Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. See you.